We had a brief break for the holidays, but we're back now with a video that a lot of you have been asking for. We're finally going to answer the question, what are the best rackets for different types of players? Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So a couple things first. One, obviously we're not in the normal setting. I came back home to Hawaii for Christmas, so hopefully you enjoy this new location, although it's definitely a work in progress. Two, I thought this video would come out before Christmas, but obviously it didn't. So Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate, and let me know what Tennessee things you all got this year. Three, this is going to be another list style of video. I know you like these, but we've got some awesome reviews coming soon, as you can imagine with the Australian Open just around the corner. So January is going to be a fun time. But anyways, like I said, today we're going to discuss which rackets are best for different types of players. And of course, as usual, remember that any of the rackets we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comment section what you want me to cover next. We're going to talk about a bunch of different types of players today. So beginners, intermediates, servant volleyers, counter punchers, aggressive baseliners, and all court players, and talk about a few different rackets that can work for each one. When you talk about beginners, it's important to differentiate between someone who's just hoping to go out and hit with their friends versus somebody who's actually trying to improve and eventually become a competitive tennis player. Because we mostly sell top end rackets, we're going to focus on the latter, and there are three rackets that stick out as the best for this type of player. Before we name them though, this is what they all have in common. Easy access to power, a big and forgiving sweet spot, and all three of these rackets are rackets that won't limit you as you develop better technique. The Wilson Ultra 100L, the Babolat Pure Drive Team, and the Yonex E-Zone 100L all have similar playability aimed at making life more simple for beginners who are looking to develop their strokes. They are all user-friendly rackets with their 280 to 285 gram weight, their 100 square inch head size, and their 16 by 19 string patterns. They're also fairly stiff and have thick beams which helps to stabilize them, and it makes their sweet spots a little bit bigger and gives a good amount of free power. The difference between these rackets and say something even more forgiving like a Babolat Pure Drive 107 is that these won't limit you in your development. If a racket is too powerful and too forgiving, it will also reward improper technique which will have a negative effect on your development. Remember, the goal of these beginner rackets is to help you get the ball over the net, yes, but also to nudge you in the right direction to eventually turn into an intermediate player. I didn't want to get too specific with any one frame in the beginner section because the most important thing there is finding the right type of racket. Once you become an intermediate player though, this is where you can target more specific playability because you'll have developed your own style so your racket choice can complement that more effectively. There are three types of rackets that stick out as the most appropriate for intermediate players and we're going to start with power rackets. The three rackets we just mentioned in the beginner section are all considered power rackets and naturally, if you've been playing with one of those rackets, the next logical step would be making your way into the more advanced version of that racket. What does more advanced though mean? Well, generally in tennis, you wanna swing the heaviest racket you possibly can. When you're a beginner, you can't swing a very heavy racket, which is why you were using a 280 or 285 gram racket, but as you develop your stroke and your tennis muscles, you'll be able to move up in weight category. This is when you're going to want to move up into the 300 gram category. This weight will give you more stability, more control, and ultimately more of everything as long as you can swing it. If you enjoy the playability of your lighter E-Zone Pure Driver Ultra, you can just move up into their 300 gram version, but at this point, it's very possible that you've developed certain tendencies, and that's where you could go look at something else. Spin. Obviously spin is a huge deal in tennis nowadays and chances are if you're a solid intermediate you are hitting with lots of topspin. This is where it might be worth looking into a spin racket. The Babolat Pure Aero 100 and Yonex V-Core 100 are great spin rackets for intermediate players. Like the Ultra Pure Drive and E-Zone, they are 300 grams with a 100 square inch head size, so most of those user-friendly properties are still there. The main difference with these frames is that they will better complement that spin-friendly style, and the Aero and V-Core in particular are great options because they're still fairly consistent, which means they won't be too difficult to control. Now the last category of rackets here in the intermediate section would be all around rackets. I do wanna be careful here because you can pretty quickly get into advanced rackets when you start with the all around or all court label, but there's one frame in particular that sticks out is still very user friendly that's also a great all around racket. The Headspeed MP combines properties of power and spin rackets, but in a package that is still fairly controlled because of its soft and thin beam. There really is no area where the speed doesn't 
perform well, so especially if you find yourself wanting more control than what you're getting from a spinner or power racket, it could be a fantastic option. Now we are going to cover other fantastic all-court rackets here in a bit, but the speed is great because it's still 300 grams, has a 100 square inch head size, so it is very user friendly. Remember that intermediate means you're still developing as a player. You can be very addicted to tennis at this point, which means you'll be interested in a bunch of other rackets, but it is best to stay in this more user friendly style before you become a true advanced player. Okay, once you're an advanced player, you'll have developed a certain style. There are many different styles of tennis players, and adapting your racket to that style can be crucial in getting the most out of your game. We'll start with serve and volley rackets because it's a bit of a dying breed, but some people still ask about it, so let's discuss. The best serve and volley rackets used to be heavy and headlight, small head sized rackets. The high weight made them stable for volleying, and then the headlight balance and small head size made them super maneuverable. A, to get to the net, and then B, to react at the net. We're talking really small head size here, like so small that it doesn't exist anymore. Sampras used an 85, and Federer, who's not a true serve and volleyer, but definitely mixes it up from time to time, used a 90 for most of his career. Those are gone, I'm sorry, but there are some great rackets that still fulfill most of those criteria pretty well. The Yonex V-Core 95 is great mainly because of its small head size, but also thanks to its very quick aerodynamic profile. The feel is a bit muted, which isn't ideal for net play, but it is still stable and precise, so it's up there with the best. Then you've got the Wilson Pro Staff 97, which is a little bit heavier than the V-Core and also two square inches bigger, so it's definitely not as quick but in terms of feel, precision, and stability, it's noticeably better. It has a traditional thin box beam and a fairly stiff flex, so if you want that classic point and shoot control of older pro staffs, it has most of it just with a little bit more user-friendly of a response. Of course, if you feel like you can handle the very hefty weight of the RF-97, everything I just said about the Pro Staff 97 also applies just in a more stable and powerful package. The Onyx Percept 97H is also a fantastic option and takes the cake for the one I consider the best for serving volley play. It has very similar specs to the Pro Staff 97, except of course the fact that it's 330 grams instead of 315, which just helps with stability. And that headlight balance means that it's still fairly maneuverable despite that high weight. Now the reason I rank it higher than the V-Core 95 is because of its new dampening technology, servo filter. Vibration dampening mesh is the main reason for why I said feel is a bit muted on the V-Core, and that's gone on the Percept, and servo filter makes for a more precise and well-defined sweet spot, which is great when you're serving volleying. A counterpuncher is a defensive-minded player who plays high percentage shots waiting for an opponent's mistake. Counterpunching can often mean playing long points from the baseline, so the key here is to pick a racket that is consistent and controlled before anything else. Consistency and control are characterized by a tight string bed and also a soft, thin, constant beam. You don't need to go for an 1820 here, but I'm going to stick to 1820s because they are simply more consistent than anything else, but keep in mind you will be sacrificing a lot of spin with them. Let's start with the Head Prestige because the best counter punchers in history have used the Head Prestige or a racket very similar to the Prestige, so it would be a disservice not to at least mention it. The Prestige Pro is the ultimate control racket with its small head size, super tight string bed, and soft flex, but there's no denying that it has very little else going for it, so unless you want just pure control and nothing else, there are better options. The Wilson Blade 1820 is a much more modern control racket with its more forgiving and powerful feel, but you will still get that great consistency you need for counterpunching. Now the two frames we just mentioned have a 98 square inch head size, which helps with control, but it also does make them a little bit more punishing and difficult to use. The reality is, when you're being pushed around the court, you could do with a little bit of help from your racket, but up until recently the best control rackets haven't been great at that, well now there are two 100 square inch 1820s that are very good at just that. The Gravity Pro and Speed Pro are special rackets because they are consistent and controlled 18 by 20s but that 100 square inch head size makes them more forgiving and gives them a bit more free power and spin than you would expect. Between the two, go for the gravity if you want more control and the speed if you want more power and spin. The speed is definitely pushing the limits a little bit here in terms of control, but as long as you're not used to the consistency of something like a Prestige, you'll be fine. That being said, the Gravity Pro is the best counter-punching racket right now. Surprise, surprise. Remember, power and spin rackets like the Pure Drive or Pure Arrow are great at what they do, but the goal of a counter puncher is to never miss, and those things that make those rackets more powerful and spin friendly also take away from a little bit of their consistency. An aggressive baseliner is somebody who stays around the baseline but plays with powerful spin friendly ground strokes trying to shorten points and hit big winners. They'll also hit the occasional drop shot or aggressive approach shot 
and they're not nearly as afraid to get to the net as a counterpuncher would be, for example. We're talking guys like Alcaraz or Sinner. Alcaraz is maybe a little more all courty, but you get the gist. Still, the powerful baseline ground stroke is the bread and butter shot here, and for that, you're going to need a racket that is precise and confidence inducing, inherently powerful, and spin friendly because that's how we control our powerful ground strokes nowadays. Combining power, spin, and control might seem impossible, but over the last couple of years we've seen massive developments in this new frame style that I like to call modern players frames, and the best three are the Yonex E-Zone 98, the Babolat Pure Aero 98, and the Head Extreme Tour. These are players frames because they still have fairly small sweet spots so control is quite good, but then they have modern elements of power and spin which sets them apart from rackets like the Prestige or the Blade. The Extreme is very spin friendly with its aerodynamic shape, open string bed, and big spin grommets, and the E-Zone is quite powerful with its thick hoop, but then has a unique flexible feel and control with its very thin throat. Those two rackets are great, but the Pure Aero 98 is in its own tier in this category. We all know how good an arrow spin is, but because this one's a 98, it's on another level in terms of racket head speed through contact. The power is also very impressive. It's a fairly stiff racket, but there's something about this arrow shape which just adds some rigidity to the frame, which translates to more power onto the ball. Then you look at the control, and while it's far from traditional, as long as you're using this racket properly, so with the racket face parallel to the ground and hitting with tons of spin, the sweet spot is actually quite precise and has very good feedback, so it has that good modern control. All court players are very versatile, which kind of means they have the highest ceiling of any type of player because they're still very good no matter what situation they find themselves in. Roger Federer is an example of a fantastic all court player. Huge serve, punishing ground strokes, great defensive play, and then touch shots and volleys that are amongst the best all time. Even if you look at Djokovic, he started as a grindy counter puncher and he's still probably the best at that but it's been his development as an all-court player that has pushed his game to the next level. Basically, becoming an all-court player can really help your game. I should take my own advice. And while it's not the racket that makes the player, there are some frames that can definitely help along the way. As you would expect, you want something well-rounded here. A racket that can help you grind with control if you need to, but that can also vary your shots for power and touch, and then precision with volleys at the net. The Headspeed MP was great for intermediates looking for a good all-around racket, and it's also great for advanced players looking for an all-court frame. We've talked about its good power, spin, and control, but it's the constant beam and auxetic layup that gives it great feel, especially for a 100, which is what you want for touch shots and volleys. The Technofiber T-Fight 305 is another fantastic option in this category, and just generally a super underrated racket, by the way. It has a pretty tight string bed, so plenty of control, but also more spin than you would expect from an 18 mainer and because the swing weight is so high it has plenty of power if you want to go for a big winner feel wise it's about as good as it gets technofiber rackets are all foam filled and foam fill rackets are kind of the cream of the crop for feel so you'll love it for touch shots the little issue that i have with the t-fight and the speed for their all cordedness is that they're both on the slower side which is really ironic for the speed and maneuverability and racket quickness are great attributes to have when you're trying to cover the whole court. This is what makes the Wilson Blade 98 1619 incredible and the best all court racket right now. It has fantastic control, we all know that, but it's that great control combined with the more powerful shape and string bed that makes for a racket that instills a lot of confidence when you're going for big powerful shots. On top of that, technologies and recent blades have helped make the racket more spin friendly and they've been lowering the swing weight which helps make it move quicker through the air. Basically everything about the Wilson blade is geared toward performing well all around the court. So there you have it. I know there are some categories we didn't cover, especially rackets for one-handed backhand players, but I have a terrible one-handed backhand, so I don't know how to formulate an opinion on the matter. Maybe you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. I know this was another long video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Next week is going to be a review on a brand new racket, so get excited. But for now, remember that if you want to demo any of the rackets we talked about here today, you can visit us in-store, or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.